بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello everyone, welcome back to strategic management courses. Here with you, Professor Azlar of Zaudi. In this video, I'll dive in, in business strategic level. Uh, actually, this chapter is about the uh, competitive strategies in organizations and the choices that can be made in order to gain certain competitive advantage. We're going to see what is a competitive advantage. The equivalent issues in the public service uh, are the choices that underpin best value uh, in uh, public service provision. In the previous chapters, we developed and we reviewed the many forces at work in business environments that is featured actually as a cutthroat uh, environment because of the fierce competition. Uh, so we reviewed the many forces at work in this uh, specific environment, uh, also the internet capabilities of organizations and the expectations and influence of the stakeholders. Actually, all these are potentially important influences uh, on the business, on the development of business strategic level. So here I have a question to you how to link these pictures to business strategic level. So for example, this uh, first picture, it shows the swimmers getting to run, getting into a race. So this race in business strategic level is uh, somehow uh, linked to, uh, as a, is like a race to a performance, I mean, to achieve a certain level of performance. Also here it shows like a um, certain culture. And business strategic level is actually about a specific culture in a specific uh, country, for example. Also here it shows an airplane, and this airplane, like a business strategic level, depends on uh, the sector or activity, right? So, for example, the aircraft industry. Um, so, let's get started. We'll try to understand in this uh, video how to identify strategic business units in organizations. We're going to overview also different bases of achieving uh, competitive advantage in terms of routes on the strategy clock. We'll see how this uh, strategy clock works. Um, actually, it turns around price based strategies, differentiation strategies, hybrid and focus strategies. So, those are levers of uh, strategies. And also, we're going to examine the factors of influencing that influences, uh, that influence, sorry, the sustainability of competitive advantage. And we will see the relationship between competition and collaboration. And also, why not the principles of game theory in relation to competitive strategy. Business strategy is concerned with the service of competitive advantage in markets at business rather than corporate level. So what is competitive advantage? Simply said, competitive advantage is being different from others. Being different or uh, having, for example, superior performance uh, compared to other competitors. Okay, Business strategy needs to be considered and defined in terms of strategic business units. Right? It is important to remember that competitive strategy in an organization is uh, created in the separate business units of the organization. Most organizations have a number of business units which are competing in different markets where customers or clients have different uh, needs and require different products or services. So we have then to understand that business level strategy is important to be able to identify the SBUs at or in an organization. Business strategy so it needs actually to be defined as those, I mean, um, as the so-called strategic business unit. We say in French, le domaine d'activité stratégique, uh, le domaine d'activité stratégique for one unit. Okay, so strategic business units. For example, we have an organization, we can imagine an organization with headquarters and different subsidiary affiliates, for example. Those affiliates can be separate or divided or split in terms of uh, geographical location, in terms of uh, product line, in terms of uh, divisions or other criteria. So those criteria are, uh, are, they are like uh, the so-called strategic business unit, the same. I mean, so different Generic strategies can be defined in terms of cost leadership, differentiation, and focus. We're going to see later on uh, these uh, specific, I mean, strategies. Managers need to consider how business strategies can be sustained through strategic capabilities. I mean, within the resources-based view and the ability to achieve a lock-in position with buyers. I mean, to again, to enforce the strength in terms of negotiation with buyers. 
uh, in hyper competitive conditions sustainable com to sustain the competitive advantage is not that easy is a, is a harder task is difficult to achieve competitors need to be able to cannibalize make small moves be unpredictable or mislead the rivals especially for example in monopolistic competition for example in the food sector like uh, uh, burger king um, mcdonald's uh, kfc etc they have to uh, they are uh, i mean competing in a, a monopolistic structure of the market and so it's really difficult to achieve this uh, competitive advantage and you have to deploy a lot of effort in terms of strategic watch and uh, in, in terms i mean of uh, capabilities uh, etc otherwise in other sectors for example example um, that are let's just say f the, the market structure is oligopolistic it's like oligopoly so in, you have the top uh, in the top list uh, strong company uh, strong I mean companies strong competitors and at the bottom less uh, less strong com competitors so in this case for example those less uh, uh, strong competitors they can use cooperative strategies rather than to engage into an aggressive I mean a competition uh, to the real risk of course to be swallowed by the strongest uh, I mean companies so cooperative strategies may offer alternatives to competitive strategies or may run in parallel okay for example in maritime, in maritime sector or in other I mean oligopolistic markets game theory for the oligopoly it's a very crucially important it's relevant I mean for the studies of oligopoly uh, game theory encourages managers to get in the mind of competitors to understand them to to get in the mind to think forwards and to reason backwards okay competitive game theory actually is a very i mean important it deserves to be developed in a different i mean a separate video i'll try to do uh, and uh, we're gonna develop develop throughout i mean different exercises several exercises okay um in business strategic level i mean in the SBU level, there are uh, two uh, blocks, if you want, to uh, separate, I mean, uh, loops or uh, pools, I mean, of strategies. The first pool contains generic strategies that can, um, in terms, for example, of cost leadership, differentiation, focus, the strategy clock. Cost leadership, uh, companies, they seek to become efficient in terms of cost. So it's a strategy of cost reduction. And based on this cost reduction, they, uh, they can reduce, for example, their prices, all right? And, um, decreasing the prices might result in a, uh, com in gaining a competitive, uh, advantage in the markets, okay? In the marketplace. So cost leadership or cost saving or cost efficiency or cost killing, all kind, all those, um, all those, I mean, strategies are based on the uh, cost reduction. Other levers of the strategy of generic strategies uh, are differentiation strategies. In differentiation, there are of course many uh, ways to be uh, differentiated. I mean, not only different, but to gain certain differentiation in terms of the product quality. Um, for example, to improve also the channels of distribution. To, uh, for example, um, gain a certain power in terms of negotiations with the suppliers or buyers, etc. And then we have a focus strategy. Focus strategy is the so-called niche strategy uh, for a segment. I mean, okay, specific segments, for example in which we can gain um, market share and we can develop the, the market share. And the strategy clock is uh, based on these uh, strategies, okay? In another pool, for example, we have interactive strategies in terms of hyper-competitive strategy, cooperation and game theory. So let's uh, see now the strategy clock. So it works in a clockwise, so from one to eight. Here in the y-axis, we have perceived va uh, products, I mean perceived value, and the perception of customers, all service benefits and the x-axis we have the price either low or high so we start by one uh, from one no frills so companies of airlines for example they provide only with the core uh, product the core product that consists of uh, selling the ticket uh, for uh, traveling okay without any for example other service beside the main service uh, that consists in traveling. So, for example, no breakfast, no comfortable uh, seats, or no luggage, etc., etc. Uh, then we have the low price in two. 
the strategy that consists in cost uh, uh, in in cutting the cost and the, the cost sorry uh, so the cost reduction the cost efficiency cost saving okay then we have hybrid in between low cost and differentiation hybrid companies they have to pay attention to not uh, be uh, stuck in the middle no differentiation neither the low a uh, price and then the uh, the company vision uh, gonna be um, let's just say confused okay and everybody gonna confuse including the customer so hybrid is uh, trying to mix up the low price with differentiation differentiation consists of uh, actually different elements but we can include i mean quality distribution channels negotiation with buyers uh, communication capability inside the company etc etc but uh, for us we can use it interchangeably as a quality okay just for to uh, simplify so differentiation is like a quality here for a luxurious for example cars the same as focus differentiation for specific segments troy Royce, or for i mean luxurious cars okay either for four or five so five you gain the premium uh, uh, the price premium because of higher price than differentiation i mean uh, the standard differentiation then we have six seven and eight Sorry, here's six, seven, and eight for strategy distinct for ultimate failure because uh, low, I mean, uh, high prices, sorry, and low service benefits, okay? Uh, unless if uh, the company is a monopoly company, okay? So no frills likely to be segment specific, low price, risk of price, war in case others they engage in the in a price war uh, low margins then it needs actually to be really the company needs to be a cost killer okay cost leader and hybrid low cost base and reinvestment in low price and differentiation i mean both for differentiation we have two levers without price premium and with price premium so without price premium perceived added value by user yielding market share benefits okay with price premium so the the client for example is pays premium uh, price for a higher quality or uh, for other services so perceived added value sufficient to be price premium and we have focused uh, differentiation perceived added value but to particular segments and it's warranty of course price premium because of higher price and then uh, standard differentiation then we have six seven and eight increased price but with standard value in this case we have high margins but if competitors do not follow otherwise risk of losing market share increased price for low value here on only for feasible in monopoly situation otherwise customers gonna ignore your product in the marketplace and low value standard price for low of market share so likely failure here and we have differentiation including hybrid and for the first two is for the uh, cost uh, reduction the low cost porter introduces the term generic strategy to mean basic types of competitive strategy that hold across many kinds of business situations competitive strategies concerned with how strategic business units achieve competitive advantage in its domain of activity competitive advantage is actually uh, for an SBU uh, to create value for its users both greater than the cost of supplying them and superior to that of rivals uh, rivals of the SBUs okay so as we define it here for example this box it uh, summarizes those strategies so here in the in this uh, line we have competitive advantage in the horizontal wall and the vertical we have competitive scope so if the scope is uh, the broad target uh, uh, for example could be broad targets or narrow targets and here the lower cost and differentiation so lower cost with broad targets is a cost leadership for cost leaders differentiation and broad targets is differentiation for quality for example for narrow i mean for segments we have uh, cost focus or differentiation focus that's why it makes sense we are talking about three generic strategies so this one this one and focus for both and then we have economies of scale and the experience curve so companies at the beginning they have higher average cost and then for example with time they can gain uh, an increase in the size in terms of output for example and they become uh, they gain economies of scale and efficiency right but with time maybe if they keep increasing growing the output per period the average cost can increase uh, due to uh, for example other hurdles and obstacles such as bureaucracy or whatever here for example the experience curve and the uh, i mean in the right side we have the uh, experience curve okay so at the beginning the unit cost is high but with time for example with community output we decrease the unit's cost okay and we increase the output 
That's all for this video. Thank you for watching.